Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton held their second presidential debate tonight in St. Louis. But it's the first debate since the video of Trump making lewd comments surfaced. Our political reporter, Jack Fink, joins us now with the highlights. Well, Dan, this debate was nastier and meaner than the first matchup between Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump. This despite the fact that they both had to answer questions directly from voters. And one of the most anticipated moments came when Trump was asked about his recorded comments from 11 years ago that went viral. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it. But this is locker room talk. I said starting back in June that he was not fit to be president and commander in chief. And many Republicans and independents have said the same thing. Another key moment came when the former Secretary of State was asked about her comments during her paid speeches to Wall Street investment banks, specifically her quote that she needs a private and public position. And yes, President Lincoln was trying to convince some people, he used some arguments, convincing other people, he used other arguments. That uh, was a great, uh, uh, I thought, a great uh, display of presidential leadership. She lied. Now she's blaming the lie on the late, great Abraham Lincoln. That's one that I haven't... Okay, honest Abe. Honest Abe never lied. That's the good thing. That's the big difference between Abraham Lincoln and you. And here to discuss the debate more is Scott Herndon, director of debate at UT Dallas. So, Professor, who do you think won this debate and why? It's a close debate, uh, although I think Trump probably edged it out, sort of, at least on the optics of it overall. If it's a policy debate, she's, she's a lot more specific and is a better policy debater, but I think that he probably came out just a little bit ahead overall. What did you think of his apology about the comments. It was almost a textbook analysis of how not to do an apology. Uh, it needed to be short, concise, contrite, and it didn't really accomplish any of those things, I didn't think. Too many caveats, really, at the end. Now, there was a moment that I, we want to go back and play, and that's when he mentioned about Bill Clinton and the accusations that faced him before and during his presidency. Let's watch. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. Everyone can draw their own conclusions at this point about whether or not the man in the video or the man on the stage respects women. So what did you think of that? That's exactly the kind of caveat that I'm talking about, that you want to avoid in a, a really sincere apology. Uh, bringing up Clinton or any of the ethics of the Clintons generally is just not a really strong, <laughs> strong sense of apology or a sense that he really cared what he said there. But you don't think it hurt him in this case? No, ultimately, not as much as it probably could have, honestly. I think that we're so wrapped up in the blow-by-blow blow and the haymakers from each one of these candidates that people may not be paying as much attention to that. So, bottom line, no knockout blows tonight? I don't think so at all. The third debate will be huge for both of them, I suspect. And, and we'll wait to see what the fallout is from there. Exactly. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Much appreciated.